This tutorial will give you an overview over the configuration of our integration agent. The Skyva integration agent is part of the overall integration suite. So the integration agent can connect directly to the Skyva integration suite in your salesforce.com environment and either sending information to Salesforce from a database or updating a database based on your information in Salesforce. If we look in the detail how the integration agent is working, the integration agent can be installed behind your firewall on a Windows server. The integration agent can connect uh, via an ODBC or JDBC adapter directly with a database. We can connect to an Oracle database, a MySQL database, or a Microsoft SQL server, or other ODBC sources like an Access database. So when you configure your integration agent, <coughs> all the information of the configuration is stored in the Skyva integration suite on your force.com environment. And based on this configuration, he is sending or receiving data from Salesforce and updating the database or vice versa. If we now look on the integration agent, after you have installed the integration agent, <coughs> go to your Windows folders, to the folder Skyva integration agent, and run the agent UI as a system administrator. You need to run it as a system administrator under, under Win7 or Windows Vista because then you can start and stop the agent service running on your Windows system. If we look, uh, we have here the integration properties. We start here to set up the connection to salesforce.com. We have here the username of your login the password and your security token and in which environment you want to connect either sandbox environment or production or developer instance. The cage time says in minutes how often the agent should look for new configurations in your Salesforce environment. And here after you have entered your username, password and security token and tested the Salesforce connection. It was successful. You can here see that you have and we have an existing integration built in Salesforce. If you want to have create a new integration you can do this here or go to the integration wizard where you can then um, build a new integration. If we look now into integration here where we want to send data from a database from the agent to salesforce.com, you are also able to um, update a database and receive data from Salesforce um, and update a database based on the data in your Salesforce instance. If we look here in the integration in the details, Choose here either if you want to connect over JDBC or ODBC data source or if you want to receive an Excel or CSV or XML file with the agent. So in our case we want to connect directly to an ODBC database and here you can create either a new adapter, so just give an adapter name or in our case we have created already an access adapter. So the access adapter now connects to an ODBC data source. You can here also choose Oracle or SQL Server or MySQL Server in a later version um, to connect directly to the database and just give here the database the URL to your ODBC adapter in Windows. We can then test here the source connection. Connection was successful, great. And um, 
you can also configure some other uh, things like automatic data processing so if there are failed messages um, in Salesforce that they are processed automatically or if you want to delete green records as soon as they are uh, processed and you can also configure the package size um, of the packages sent to Salesforce. Here we see as well that we have created already some interfaces um, in our integration and if we now double click on the interface for accounts we see that we have here our account interface what we know from um, um, the standard or some manual upload in Salesforce we have the operation type absurd we want to fill the account information the account object in Salesforce it's deployed the sequence and it's an inbound interface we have here our SQL statement our query statement and based on this query statement uh, we create the I structure of the interface which you can map later and transform your data so to see if the interface is working and everything, the SQL statement, we can test our SQL query statement and we can see then uh, what the query statement is delivering, which information. If you want to make a daily upload, you can also um, select the last modify date so that you say, okay, um, I want only receive the information in a daily a query um, from the last, in our case, 200 days, you can also change here the information that you also want to receive only the information from the last day or from the last 10 or 15 days. Okay, as soon as you query is okay, you can save it here and then all the information is saved uh, on the interface accounts in Salesforce. Or we can also, if we save it, um, go directly here to the mapping. So the mapping connects you directly now to your Salesforce interface. We have here the source information of your database. This is built from your SQL query and if you click here on your target object which is receiving the information you can now via drag and drop map the different fields from your database with Salesforce. We have done this already here so as soon as you have mapped it you can use formulas to transform your data so that uh, the data from a database is matching with your um, target field information in Salesforce and so on and as soon as you have done it and ticked as well what is your external ID which you're using you can tick next and if you tick next you see that we select the 15, 50 records from your database and based on these 50 records you can click test integrate and then we send the information um, over to Salesforce so this is the information what we have selected and you see here that messages were created uh, in your interface in Salesforce and that you have also here we have some log files so if we look now in our Salesforce instance, in our integration, we see here that we have here the details of the integration. This is the adapter, what we have created already. We have here our interface information and if we look on the interface accounts, for example, we see here that we have here deployed we have here the account it's an inbound interface so the same information as we have entered in the agent and if we scroll down we see here 
two SQL statements. So this is the SQL statement what we have tested in the agent and um, this is the SQL statement where we can make an in initial query. So this means this delivers us all the information from the database so all accounts and the second query delivers us only the information from the last 200 days in our case. So if you have tested the different SQL queries you can change the query what you want to use or what the agent should use here if you tick the checkbox initialization. So if you tick, tick the checkbox initialization the agent will use the first, interf uh, the first um, select statement if the checkbox is unmarked, the agent will use the standard query to receive the data. If we scroll down now, we see as well here our source information from the database and also the information of the objects in Salesforce and here the mapping what we have created on the agent side. So you see all the information from the agent is stored here in Salesforce and if you want to change it later you don't need to connect always to the agent you can do this directly here in Salesforce. Okay if we scroll up and go back to our interface we can see here that we have messages and if we search now we see that we have three new year records and the agent have sent this information and updated these accounts because of our test of the agent. So this was a very quick overview over the integration agent, how you can call the agent. So um, if we have tested everything and go back to the agent, we say okay everything was working, the interface is working, we can finish everything. We close it here. Uh, we didn't make any changes. And then here uh, under integration scheduling we can say either what is the scheduling for the agent sending information to Salesforce and what is the scheduling that uh, the agent updates the database. So in our case we want to change it here and say okay when should the agent run so we say run every minute when is the starting hour the ending hour what uh, frequency do we have in a week and also what is the monthly frequency so this language will also depend on your system language of your systems in my case it's German in another case could be English or other languages as well Okay, if everything um, is working here, we go back and then we can start the agent directly from the user interface. In this case, uh, we start uh, a Windows um, service and this cron job, what we have configured here of the integration scheduling, and then the agent is sending and updating the data. Um, of the different interfaces um, every minute based on our scheduling. If you want to create a new um, integration from here after you have entered the integration properties and created your um, integration uh, you can also create here a new integration name you can create here a new source adapter and so on and uh, if you click save and next uh, you can create then uh, the interfaces and everything test your source connection and so on so this will help you to start uh, initially to build your integration um, in a more advanced way thank you very much for listening I hope you will try and test the integration agent you can do this um, the integration agent is part of the advanced edition. Um, happy to support you to build your first connectivity to a database via the integration agent.